This video is going to go through a quick review of the idea of using a control volume versus that of a system when we talk about fluid flow and end with a conceptual example of this. So something everyone experiences and relies on in their daily business is that of blood flow. So here we have a great picture of a particular artery and we want to think of the fluid from both the Eulerian or Lagrangian perspectives and characterize how that fluid or that blood is going to move through that artery. Now a Eulerian approach would be to pretend you are sitting right here at this intersection and look at a particular point and characterize how the fluid moves through that point basically therefore as a function of position and with time. Now in contrast a Lagrangian approach would be to take a certain set of fluid particles and track how each one individually flows from start to finish. Similarly, if we wanted to model the fluid flow and say the drug transport through the bloodstream, we could take a collection of those particles and analyze uh, its fluid flow from start to wherever it eventually dissipates. And by doing so, we would be looking at that particular system of that drug. This system would be tracked together regardless of what happens to its shape and where it goes. But maybe, for instance, we were really interested in a very particular part of an artery and what happens to that as fluid flows past it. And so maybe we wanted to look at just a certain area within that artery. In this approach, we would say we are looking at a control volume. This allows us to specifically focus on the effects of a fluid in that particular volume, which is typically what we are most interested in anyways. Now the problem arises in that most laws we use in fluids and thermodynamics are for the system. For example, that the mass must remain constant. In system approaches are very much a Lagrangian perspective, and therefore you can see that using a control volume is very much a Eulerian approach. So why is a control volume approach more appropriate for the analysis of fluids in motion, in most cases? It's A, well, difficult to follow deforming moving fluids. You can imagine a system of particles flowing through an artery like this and having to track each individual one as it branches and goes into multiple places. And we're usually interested in the effects of fluids in motionless devices, such as a pump. So we want to use a control volume approach in a Eulerian flow description and therefore need to determine relationships of our governing laws to the systems. And such a relationship is made using the Reynolds Transport Theorem. And this will be described in a later screencast. So let's quickly review the concept of control volume in systems by going through a concept test. So here we have a depiction of a fire extinguisher. And we're told that the control volume is that inside of the extinguisher tank. So the question is, what's happening to the control volume mass? Now if we tracked the mass in the tank to start and what happens to it with time and where it goes, that's a systems approach. But here we're looking at just the control volume. So although we know mass is conserved, the mass within this control volume is decreasing as it comes out of the extinguisher. Now in contrary, if we would have said what's happened to the system mass and we weren't told what the control volume was and we were just looking at the gas initially in here as our system, we know that the mass of that system is not going to change with time and we would have said constant. So hopefully this gives you an idea of why we might want to look at control volumes and yet still find a way to use the governing laws for systems when we do this analysis. Hopefully this gives you an idea of the differences between using a control volume and a system.